once again you're back here with old Barry and uh, before we get started here uh, I knew this would happen I I knew it um, the minute I started talking about money it's uh, in the previous video gosh I don't think I've ever had so many people reach me on uh, Barry at something feels wrong dot com on my email it's always I always joked about this before I get started. Hey, eh? those of you that my small group that you know likes you know the videos we do and stuff, and uh, we're getting more bits of information. But not to get sidetracked. It's the funniest thing I always said. The one God we all believe in is money. Now, that's kind of I, I don't mean it in a good way or a bad way. I just mean it in it is what it is. And sure, I've had religious people, you know, and on tours and and uh, I've had rabbis and ministers and preachers and people from the faith of Islam and they're all good people but the funny thing is they'll all tell me I'm wrong and within five minutes they're asking me for a donation so I'm going to leave it at that we're going to move on because I, I really want to say thanks for reaching out because I, I really uh, I respect everybody's viewpoint where it's coming from I just report fact you take it for for what it's worth from there uh, but I knew this uh, FDIC video would draw a lot of attention. So, and I've had a lot of people say, uh, explain it a bit more here. Okay, I'm going to do that. And uh, from then we're moving on to, uh, because this is, you know, part of, you know, A1. If it were us people, long ago we've done this, is we've removed our money from these organizations okay but continuing on with the video uh, I'll explain it a bit further because I'm not sure at this point how many people even understand what I'm about to say um, when you open up an account at any uh, FDIC or any bank branch or credit union whatever the case may be seriously I'm asking you a serious question how many of you read the 40 or 35 pages of legal jargon that goes along with it. Like many, including me. Did you just rush through and uh, kind of look at the last page and see where the little X is and okay, let me deposit my money. I, I want to go. I have things to do today. Because that was me years ago before I asked questions. And uh, those who aren't with me yet, I want to drop it down and I really want you to understand this. So I'm going to give you another example that you cannot uh, not understand, cannot get it, okay? When you have an upgrade on your cell phone, regardless of what it is, iPhone, Samsung, I don't care. Okay, the first thing it asks you is do uh, you agree? Now you can press the information and there's like 30 pages of scribble. How many of you read that or do you just go and say I agree just to get the app so you can use your phone? Well, that's what everybody does. Okay, so let's move ahead. When opening an account, um, first of all, you are not a customer like you think you are at the bank okay this is I think first and foremost to realize you are not a customer you are a creditor um, in case there's still a little bit of gray area I'm going to even break it down a little bit further because I think it's of the utmost importance that anybody that's taking the time to even watch this uh, would want to understand it fully. Okay, you are a creditor, what is called a third tier creditor. What that means is when you deposit money into the bank after you've already signed, it means that you have given permission for this firm to use your money in their discretion how they see fit. Now you are given the security, okay, this is where the FDIC comes in. 
you are given the security of up to a certain amount, it might be 150,000, 250,000, that amount will vary uh, to each nation or each country, okay? Kind of like a, a value, like a different currency would against the dollar. Um, but, I mean, they're fairly respectable numbers, um, you know. Again, it's imperative that you understand that the FDIC, because of how your money was used, and I'm going to do a video on this about how it's called fractional reserve banking, on how they only need to keep a minimum of 10%. So in other words, you deposit $100, okay? They have to keep $10 on hand. They can reinvest that $90, okay? Of that $90, which is of the original 100, there is no more. That which was loaned out, that 90, gets redeposited, okay? Well, they're allowed to then borrow 10% of that will keep 10 and leverage 90% of that. So you do this enough times and you come up with where we come up with the saying that the emperor has no clothes. Um, this kind of, for lack of a better word, it does fall into the category of a Ponzi. It really does because the money's not there. But for this type of Ponzi to work, uh, it's fine if you're introducing more currency, and as long as the demand for the liquidity, the cash of it, is not extensive, it will go on. It's when people start wanting their cash. That's when the hiccup starts turning into a, a severe cough. And um, just so you know, as being a third tier creditor, chances are um, there's nothing left for you at the bottom of the barrel. So you see, you gave them permission. Okay, You didn't deposit your money into a, let's say, bank where it's there upon asking. You gave them permission to leverage it, and boy, did they screw you over on that one buying bundled loans, bundled packages for real estate, labeling them. I mean, if we did this, folks, we'd be locked up, and they would have thrown away the key years ago uh, if we did what the banks have done to, to all of us, which is why I don't use them. At, at let, unless it's wiring or whatever as a means of, of depositing or withdrawing, but it never stays there. It's only an intermediary. Um, if you only knew, if you only knew what you're depending on, those of you that have your money in these 401ks and the, where the emperor has no clothes on any of them, and, and, and buying bundled loans at, at, at a package and, and finding out their junk, knowing they were junk when they were sold. As I say, if we did anything like that, we would have been thrown in jail and they would have locked the door and probably not even fed us, just let us die there. I can't, I can't stress how, uh, how bad this situation is, but I knew this is what would uh, get a lot of emails coming to me a lot more. So we're going to address uh, a little bit further on. We're going to also be branching into one of the clearest routes that we see as we peel the onion, as the mentors do. And, uh, we strongly see over the next decade, uh, half decade to decade, and probably closer to a decade, the, the growth and the place to be putting a lot of your thought would be into the commodity sector. And when I say that, uh, you know, the gold and silver guys who hate me, even though I love gold and silver, because you tell it straight, you're never going to be popular when you tell the truth. You know, like they say, you got to lead, uh, to lead an orchestra, you got to turn your back on the crowd. So, you know, I'm used to that. But I think there'll be nice returns on that over the next, now is the first time I'm ever saying this. Uh, I've been saying, yeah, it'll get its day, but I'm, I'm thinking the turn is about now. We are, anyway, the mentors. But even more predominantly than that, what we're talking about commodities, we're talking about agriculture. We're talking about fruits, vegetables, meats, uh, those type of things. Because uh, while the demand might not be on the increase, it's going to be the supply side that it's going to suffer. 
uh, because of funding and where we're, we're going. So uh, I think, uh, you know, lower supply, even with the same demand, will create a positive turn in those type of things. Um, anyway, so we'll move on from there. I just wanted to get you caught up on that last bit, that understand you're a creditor. So, um, you know, the mentors, yeah, long, long, long ago, we've left minimal minimal amounts in any of these institutions. Uh, I joked around on the last video and I'll say it again because I thought it was a very prominent remark. Uh, unlike your government, uh, we give you more credit for being an adult, okay? We, we really believe <laughs> I'm, laughing, I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. We really believe that you can do a better job with your own liquid cash than stuffing it in a mattress or rolling it up into big wads and walking around with it sticking out of your pockets, okay? So until next time, I'll continue a bit further on uh, a little bit more of a tracking. It's just bear with us. It does take time, but we can tell you now we're leaning towards medium uh, landing. We initially had a few on the soft side. Uh, they're going pretty much by the wayside. The onion is removing them. It's not our personal thoughts and we're leaning now a little bit more to a, a medium settle to a, a medium two-thirds of a rougher landing. Uh, this is solely because of our, uh, our I guess it's in our DNA but we refuse to learn. We just keep repeating mistakes and uh, uh, the amount of divide right now in the world is, is like unlike anything we've ever measured in, in our decades of being together. I mean the mentors. So we are leaning now towards a, a medium to a medium harder landing. Uh, so we'll keep you informed with that, but right now we suggest uh, we'll do some videos if time permits too while everything's locked down. We're getting some nice videos uh, from subscribers around the world. Uh, showing uh, in certain areas already the lineups at banks uh, about how banks are closing their branches but leaving the ATM which quickly runs out of cash and the drive up service open claiming it due to be of course coronavirus and uh, it's uh, how the affluent in certain areas are already pooling their money out of banks uh, most of this is not going to be found on, on mainstream, but these are hard boots on the ground information, uh, which I think is invaluable, which we're only trying to share. We're not trying to influence you. Do it. Like I say, you know, you can avoid reality all you want in a closing statement, but you can't avoid the consequences of ignoring reality. Okay, that's where your free will runs into a brick wall. But uh, we'll continue a little further. Until next time, glad you all getting something out of it. Keep the emails, the bits of information. We appreciate it. It's Old Bear NDR. Talk to you soon. Bye.